Welcome. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Nellie, and if you weren't here for the previous session, um, we're in for a treat. Uh, our speaker is all ready, and um, this is the last day, the last uh, session of the second day. Tomorrow we have a full day, so uh, get enough sleep so you can join us tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. EST. And we can continue with the Spring Blog Festival. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be in the back, okay, listening and learning. So our speaker is Sue Wyatt from Australia. And her, um, is that taste? That's that's your Skype, I guess, eh? Uh, the taste ache, or is it task, task teach? I don't know where that came from. Task teach. All right. Yes. So we're we're anxiously. I'm waiting to hear. I see that the Canadian flag is here. That's great. So uh, and I see some other flags that look very familiar, but I want to make a mistake. Uh, I used to know the flags. I see South Africa. That I know. Um, so Sue, um, what brings you to blogging? How did you get started? And um, let's start. Okay, um, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I'm Sue White. On the internet, I'm known as either Miss W or Taz Teach. And you'll find that the little picture of the lady there with the grey hair, uh, that's my avatar that I'm known by around the world. Whenever I go to any conferences, that's the avatar I'm known by. Um, a little bit of history about the Student Blogging Challenge. Um, it began back in 2008 and I need to work out how to do this. And it began with me somehow connecting with Sue Waters from Western Australia. She had a blog all about aquaculture and I started asking her questions and decided that I'd actually start my own personal blog. And that was back in January. By February, I'd thought, this is a great idea. Uh, I'll do it with my class as well. And at that stage, I had a grade six, seven class of my own. I also started developing a personal learning network then through blogging. When I was writing posts on my personal blog, I was getting people leaving comments there and making connections with me. So the reason I wanted um, my students to be blogging was to get them out of the confines of their school and out into the big wide world and seeing what other people were doing around the world. I found that um, students were leaving comments on the class blog and they were leaving comments on each other's blogs, but they weren't getting anything from anywhere else. It was still as if we were in that little yard closed space. And so I just thought, well, what am I going to do about this? The students don't have that learning network outside of their own little world. So I'm going to have to bring that learning network to them. And the way to do it was to use my network from reading the blog and Twitter. Now, at this stage, I've virtually done nothing in Twitter. I joined Twitter, but for six months, I hadn't seen the value of it at all. I was following a few people that I often forget to, you know, even go and check my Twitter. Yep. But this is where it suddenly came that Twitter would be a great way to make connections. So I had a chat with Sue Waters again, and this is where EduBlog has come in a lot to help me with the challenge. And she put out a tweet, um, were there any teachers that wanted to come and leave comments on this post of students who were just learning to blog? And I got back some replies from various... Okay, um, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I'm Sue White. On the internet, I'm known as either Miss W or Taz Teach. And you'll find that the little picture of the lady there with the grey hair, uh, that's my avatar that I'm known by around the world. Whenever I go to any conferences, that's the avatar I'm known by. Um, a little bit of history about the Student Blogging Challenge. Um, it began back in 2008 and 
they weren't allowed to do it through I need to work out how to do so this. And it began with me somehow connecting with so Sue Waters from Western Australia. She had a blog all about aquaculture and I started asking her questions and decided that I'd actually start my own personal blog. And that was back in January. By February, I thought, this is a great idea. Uh, I'll do it with my class as well. And at that stage, I had a grade six, seven class of my own. I also started developing a personal learning network then through blogging. When I was writing posts on my personal blog, I was getting people leaving comments there and making connections with me. So the reason I wanted um, my students to be blogging was to get them out of the confines of their school and out into the big wide world and seeing what other people were doing around the world. I found that um, students were leaving comments on the class blog and they were leaving comments on each other's blog, but they weren't getting anything from anywhere else. It was still as if we were in that little yard that enclosed space. And so I just said, well, what am I going to do about this? The students don't have that learning network outside of their own little world. So I'm going to have to bring that learning network to them. And the way to do it was to use my network from reading the blogs and Twitter. Now, at this stage, I'd virtually done nothing in Twitter. I joined Twitter. But for six months, I hadn't seen the value of it at all. I was following a few people, but I'd often forget to, you know, even go and check my Twitter. But this is where it suddenly came that Twitter would be a great way to make connections. So I had a chat with Sue Waters again, and this is where EduBlogs has come in a lot to help me with the challenge. And she put out a tweet. Um, were there any teachers that wanted to come and leave comments on this post of students who were just learning to blog? And I got back some replies from various teachers. And so the first four teachers that I connected with were Jane Smith, who is a grade five, six teacher in Vancouver. Um, oh, sorry, on Vancouver Island in Canada. And she was doing a lot of blogging with her class. She was one of the leaders of blogging um, in her district there. Uh, Impi um, Inez, she was a Portuguese teacher. And the way that she was doing blogging with her class were they weren't allowed to do it during school time. But she had students who were very interested in blogging. So she was doing it after school hours by the kids instant messaging her or emailing her. And so she was doing, um, teaching them all about blogging after school hours. Paul Bogish, he's a middle school teacher in Connecticut. And he was doing an extremely large amount of work on wikis and blogging with his middle school students. So you can see I had a, a quite good range of students there, five, six, and middle school. Mercher and Merchan is a prep to 12 teacher in Australia. And she does a lot with um, Australia E-Series, which is a online um, seminar that we hold each week. So these were the people that I made the first contacts with. Sue Waters, who was with Edge Blogs by this time, would do a lot of the publicity for me. And EduBlogs also, once I started doing the challenge, they um, would do things like designing the website. They would create badges for me. Um, we've presented at ISTE a couple of times about the blogging challenge. Any questions so far? No. I hope everyone's still hearing me. Okay. <coughs> so the first blogging challenge happened in September of 2008. At this stage, my students had been blogging for about six months. And we started off with just uh, those four teachers. But by the end of the 10-week blogging challenge, we had 
26 classes taking part. Other people had been seeing us tweeting about it and they wanted to join us. So by the end of the first challenge, there were 250 students on their own and 26 class blogs taking part in the challenge. Now, the challenge is set up that it takes 10 weeks to do and each week you come and visit the challenge blog and there will be a post that I've written. The post will include a variety of activities that you could do in your class. It's not specific. You can choose to do it. If you're on holidays or vacation, then you don't do it that week. You come back and you use that perhaps later on in the year. So this was one all about um, living in a small world. And the idea of this was to get students to add some widgets to their blog. Like Linda said in her presentation, things like a translate button. We've got students from places like Algeria, Bahrain, India, China, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA taking part in the challenge. For some of them, English isn't their first language. So having a translation button is a good idea on your blog. Having things like your cluster map, which is a little map to show where your visitors have come from. Having a flag counter so that the students start recognising flags of the world as well. So when I write the post, I'll give them ideas of what to do and then you'll see down in the bottom part there, I explain how to do some things. Whenever I do any any explaining, it's always as if it was for an Edge Blogs it's blog. It's working, so I'll be but your eyes. I do also okay. have hints for um, people using Blogger so, and Kid Blog okay, and I'll Weebly. By the third challenge in September 2009, yeah. we'd... Uh, Yes. Got quite a few um, more. We are up to 101 classes and over 500 not students yet. registered. We're still in the uh, was This was becoming a little bit too much. Not just yet. You have to go handle. to the website. Are you on I, the website? No, I was don't, used don't to going and visiting a student blog you, at least three no, times don't close that. through the challenge. Um, say no. But I couldn't yes, do that with 513 the, students the registered. Link that you, uh, so Did, Sue Waters suggested, well, why don't we get a teacher help going? like a mentor, somebody to look after or a group of students. if you students. have it somewhere. So again, the, the Sue, through her large Edu personal blog. learning network and Edgy Blogs and Twitter, she put out a call yeah. for and it'll people take you to come there, over and, we'll and see what you help see. us run the challenge. Oh, okay. so if I minimize and this was a post that we wrote all about just what it would be to be a helper. Click, yeah, that's it. Now we so see the it. idea Excellent. would be the, the helper would leave you're one or more pro. comments on your blog. Right. So you it might be on yeah. the About page yes. or on a post. Mm -hmm. yes. um, it so might include clues about how to improve your blog, yeah. but also the blog for them to try and carry on a conversation yeah. with the students uh, that they're looking after. And the About page has um, three different pages that you can feel free to look at. Instead of me actually clicking on them, if you're on your own... Okay, that's blog, that's the history of it. Desktop, um, we do actually have a hashtag as well for the student blogging challenge. So if you're on Twitter and you're wanting to look for the student blogging challenge for this year, that's the hashtag that you use, hash 14 stubc Now, I've not done this before. Um, I've never been on WizIQ before, so oh, I'm hoping. Can you go if back I and click on the, uh, screen, on the screen? Yeah, on the link. This is going to get me to my desktop. Uh, yeah, that's it. You can, otherwise, you can click anywhere if you we'll click see on the link see. I've just put in right. chat and actually go to the Student Challenge blog. We're actually going to be looking at the Student Challenge blog from now on in this session. So for about 20, 25 minutes, you'll be able to look at the blog and ask questions. So let's try this screen thing and see what happens. You're not there anymore. Oh, okay. Are you there? Yeah, can you click on, can you scroll down or... Yeah, can you scroll down or Let's show us? Works. Yeah, you're in home now, right? Okay, now you're going to register. Yes, okay. 
Oh, okay. So I just need to, about okay. I just need to go yes. down like here and go to the student yeah. blogging challenge the FAQ. And you can now see my student blogging challenge page. So am I right now to pick Can everyone see the student blogging challenge page? Yes. Challenges involved? Yeah, we see what you see. Exactly what you yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. So this is just giving you some examples of the sorts of posts that they were doing about why they joined the challenge. Uh, a post about global issues. You'll find that in the March challenge we talk about Earth Hour and how everybody um Okay, I'm actually in the September challenge we look at the Oh, I just click on it there. Bloggers from all okay. joining together and writing about the one topic and topics that they've had Oh okay, so if I minimise here climate change and human rights. You now see um students like posts about their favourite interests or holidays or countries that they'd like to visit. Oh okay. You so you can see it in your blog post. Yeah. Learning about That's it. Okay, so looking at all the things that are here on the student blogging challenge, you'll find across the top here uh, what are called pages. And the about page has um, three different pages that you can feel free to look at. Instead of me actually clicking on them, if you're on your own copy of the blog on your own desktop, if you just click through them and have a read on them, you'll find that um, the Challenge FAQs is a good one to look at. It goes through any sorts of questions that teachers might have about um, the challenge, you know, whether they can join late, what sort of blogging platform they need to use and so on. Um, the glossary is just lots of um, words that will invite others to come and make comments. So they've got to think about what the post is all about. We get them to and I'll actually open it up for you. All right then. And I'll so, also mention things about Facebook and their privacy settings. Um, oh, all right then. Okay. So the challenge FAQ is just about how the class can be involved, what you need to do as a teacher, um, how to join as a student. Um, it also goes on about can you start later, and these are some of the challenges that students have been involved in. And so you'll find a long list there of different and how they're not often Is it there now? Is it okay there now? Dad had already shown pictures on the internet when they were born and um, they've sent them off to relatives and they've passed them on to others so their footprint has No, I'm in I'm an FAQ still. Can you see that? So then do um, about and the FAQs. And we try and get Classes, create a commenting guideline. What's expected? So, am I right now to keep going? Is everybody seeing what will the challenges involve on their screen? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, this is just giving you some examples of the sorts of posts that they were doing about why they joined the challenge. Uh, a post about global issues. You'll find that in the March challenge, we talk about Earth Hour and how everybody um, participates in that one. In the September challenge we look at the Blog Action Day which is bloggers from all around the world joining together and writing about the one topic and topics that they've had in previous Blog Action Days being water, climate change and human rights. Um, students write posts about their favourite interests or holidays or countries that they'd like to visit. We look at using images in your blog post and learning about Creative Commons and how to give attribution for your images. Most students think that if they just click on Google Images, they can use any Google image that they find. Well, most Google images are copyrighted, and you need to actually have images on your blog that either you've taken yourself or that are Creative Commons. And so we give the students a variety of places to go to to find Creative Commons images. And some of the different blogging platforms actually have a plugin that students can use that automatically find them in Commons images. We get the students to write posts that um, talk about commenting, what's the best way to get comments from other people. 
And so we asked them to write a post that will invite others to come and leave a comment. So they've got to think about what the post is all about. Um, we get them to look at their positive digital footprint. And I'll often mention things about Facebook and their privacy settings. Um, we'll also look at things like joining Voki and other websites that they might get and what sort of information they're leaving there. We have a video that we watch as part of the digital footprint and how their footprint actually starts before they're born. When they have the sonogram and that sort of thing as a baby. And how they're not often in control of their total footprint. But, you know, mum and dad have already shown pictures on the internet when they were born and um, they've sent them off to relatives and they've passed them on to others. So their footprint has started very early in life. We also then do um, looking at commenting and we try and get classes to create a commenting guideline. What's expected when you leave comments on our class blog? Um, we get students to make sure they're replying to comments. If you're moderating own comments on your blog, then you read each comment as it comes in and you comment back. But in some cases, teachers have it set that students don't have to moderate blogs, their comments. And so the comment just gets approved without any knowledge of the student and they then don't know to comment back because they don't realise the comment's gone through. Um, we try and get them to use a variety of web tools, doing things like comics, quizzes, um, not yet, polls, but, you know, it depends using on our embed connection. code I did see um, in it comments moving. For their, in links in their comments. Uh, did you go into a link? Did you click then on anything? The yet? actual blog presentation, looking at their blog. Oh, I see. Create their the student, avatar, oh, you've got create your, their okay, about I page. See. That's, that's they, the badge. They look at different widgets Beautiful to badge. Put on. They look at different tags and categories. And realising that how they tag and categorise each post is how they want in future by people well, trying to find something on the right similar. And the centre. Um, you'll see on the right hand side oh. there now the 2014 badge. Okay, now it's moving. And that is actually linked to the blogging challenge. What's it moving to? <coughs> um, I don't know. It's not. You, you can also to see the cluster map there. down Did there that you can see how many visitors you've had. I've also got a little contact well, me I'm if students or oh, teachers okay. need to okay. contact All me. Right. Um, finding posts about. So these are my tags that I use blog. So if you want to find um, oh. some posts about avatars, you just click on the word avatar I'm and up it comes. The chat if you want to have you um, the flags? posts about because holidays, you click on, on holidays and up they Can everybody come. see the front page with the flags? We also have on the sidebar of the blog a get help section. And this is for those students chat, and teachers who might not left. know a lot about blogging or are using a different platform than edgy blogs. <coughs> Sorry about this coughing. Um, so I've got some sections there for blogger and there's one teacher from New Zealand who's got a brilliant blog that's all about how to create blogger blogs and as I've recommended there. Kid blog, if students are using kid blog, Tumblr and Weeb. Then we've got web tools to use. So these are recommended tools that students and classes could be using. And if teachers find another one that they think would be great to use, they can comment and I'll add it to the list. Like I've only just added um, Poplet and write about this, which is an app. I might actually start dividing this up into um, apps as well. So it's separate to web tools. So that's the page for any questions that people might have. Across the top, the next one, the class blog help, that takes you to a different place, which is the EduBlogs Teacher Challenge. Now, has that come up on the screen now, Nelly? And you all do the same challenge and work off each other. Yeah. Uh, 
So next week's heading across here is register for March 2014. So no, I've got it on the top okay. on a new tab. Click on that and it will give you three different links. Yeah. One if you're registering as a mentor, one if, and one if you're registering no, so as a mentor. Do you see on the screen now Edge Blogs Teacher Challenges, Blogging with Students? Once you've registered, it's a Google form that you register on. Google then creates me a spreadsheet. And I then include oh. that spreadsheet onto the... Okay, I'm, I'm back to the main so student. now going to be going to the... What's it moving to? Classes. So you'll find we're on the same page, same sort of thing here. But we now have all the classes that have taken part in... No, uh, don't worry. I'm still on the student yeah. blogging challenge blog yeah. then. Um, and teachers now yeah. see... Uh, Are we still like there? Can you still see all the flags? With the name of the, the screen with all the flags. Country, ages of students. Can you see that, that now? Not yet, but it will appear in a couple of seconds. Okay. Yes, I've got a very connection here. I keep getting little reminders that things are slow. Oh, okay. So what I've got here is a list of all the different classes with the URL of their blog. So if you're teaching a student that are aged four to seven years old, here are all the blogs of the teachers that are working with students of that age. If you're working with students Okay. Well I'll years, keep on going. Um because as I said if people have got this open in their own computer they can be following along what I'm doing so in the about area there you look at the challenge FAQs sorry. the next tab across there is the class blog help we found that once we got going with the student blogging challenge that there were often teachers who didn't know how to do but they got their students to take part in the challenge so the teachers needed to know a bit about blogging beforehand as well so Sue Waters from EduBlogs and a few other teachers from around the world, we got together and we created what's called the Teacher Challenge. And that class blog help link will take to the Teacher Challenge. And they've got a variety of challenges that you can do. One is setting up your own personal blog. One is blogging with students. Wow. And another one is setting up your personal learning network. So there's three different challenges that you can take part in. And it's a good way of getting perhaps five or six staff at the one school together. And you all do the same challenge and work off each other. Uh, the next wet heading across here is register for March 2014. So that's the registration page. You just click on that and it will give you three different links. One if you're registering as a mentor, one if and one if you're registering your the students are registering themselves. So we're going to look at the class one. Once you've registered, it's a Google form that you register on. Google then creates me a spreadsheet. And I then embed that spreadsheet onto the blog here. So we're now going to be going to the classes. So you'll find we're on the same page, same sort of thing here. But we now have all the classes that are taking part in the challenge. And here they are. Can teachers now see it looks like a spreadsheet with the name of the class, the URL, country, ages of students. Can you see that? Nelly? They have been asked to yeah. write a Okay. Yes, yeah, so I've got a very slow connection here. I keep getting little reminders that things are slow. So what I've got here is a list of all the different classes with the URL of their blog. So if you're teaching a students that are aged four to seven years old, here are all the blogs of the teachers that are working with students of that age. If you're working with students who are seven to nine year olds, there's that list of them for B. And you just keep on going down the list. You'll find that anything that I've coloured in blue under their country name means that I can't get into their blog at the moment to leave a comment. Often this is for blog blogs where teachers haven't changed the privacy settings. 
So that's what you have for the teachers if they're using class blogs. They just go there and they click on the link and it takes them to that person's class. We also have the same thing for students. They have their list at the top of the blogging challenge blog and you just click on that link and it will now take you to the student list. Now at the moment there's 1200 students on the list and again they're in ages. So I've started allocating mentors. Now mentors are given between 20 and 30 students and they're on your list here and you'll find I put the name of the mentor on there and then I colour. So Mrs Watanabe is mentoring some of the eight-year-old students and so I've got her in blue. So any of the students that are in blue underneath her name are the ones that she is mentoring. And so she's got a connection to each of their blogs and the age of the students and then there are also tests of the students. So I can see I'm going to have to go and change the width of the blog URL column so we can see the interests as well nice and easily. But when the students register they have to include two interests and that way they can start making connections themselves. They can, if they're eight years old, they can look at the other eight year olds and see which of those students also have similar interests to them and that would be a way of them making connections themselves. The people who are the mentors, they have been asked to write a short bio and leave it as a comment on the mentoring page and that way if students want to go and check out their mentor is they can but it's also a way for me to check out is this a legitimate educator who is offering to be a mentor. So Wait, where are they you? have to leave oh, okay. a URL um, of a blog bring that, back. or a wiki Everything that they might be are using at the bottom as left, part of their education so, uh, program. What you need to do is pop it up, just click Look at the bottom left and you'll be able to get everything Now I think there's just one last uh, thing like, here uh, that I needed to mention was we started with the puzzle this putting, yeah, last putting the year. puzzle back together. Sue Waters started so uh, you may have to put the pieces together here. The magazine. bottom left, the and chat so may have gone to the bottom left. Flipboard magazine is this one here of the, one uh, of the screen world. there of the white And I've also got so one that I've just started now for the March 2014 and, uh, challenge. Pop it and out or this pop is by it. using that, that was the amazing. Flipboard app. So absolutely amazing. Any posts I'm that I see that the students so impressed, have written that are really great, uh, I flip years. them so that's, into um, this magazine. That's and quite so a while. this particular and, uh, magazine, of, One uh, World, Our ideas, World, is all about our global issue What are some of the challenges? So anything that relates that, to a global uh, issue I mean, activity really and the students kids. have written a great post, um, I've flipped it into there. So that's a way of teachers then being able to just check out that magazine and they can get their students to go in there and um, read posts from other students, leave comments on them and so on. Now our very last activity that we do each year is an audit. I also always say to the students that after 10 weeks teaching at school, your teachers you usually ask you to reflect and evaluate on what's happening. So I get them to do exactly the same on their blog. And so they have to look back over their last 10 weeks to see what's happened with their blog what improvements have been made, what they've added, how many posts they've written, the comments they've received. And then I ask them to also get someone who has not seen their blog before, it might be a parent, another teacher, a neighbour, to also go and look at their blog and make comments about it. And often you'll get comments back then, all oh, the music was a bit too loud when I started the blog because some students will put playlists on there and as soon as you open the blog the music's playing or the little bird is chirping from their um, pet that they've put on their blog and so on.
So having an audit is a really good way of being the last activity on the challenge. So I'm hoping people have got some, some ideas there and uh, that's it. Back to you, Nelly. I found that I was going over the same activities all the time and there are some teachers who've been taking part since that 2008 with their classes. And so the teachers know that the activities are coming up, but because they're new students, that really doesn't matter that I've already done that activity a year or so ago. So I'm, I'm back on the... When I find I've got some students who have been there for four or five challenges, then I've got to make sure that there's a nice variety of activities. That's why I try and have, you know, six to ten activities each week because I know students won't get through all of them. Some students do try. They try and get all six activities done that week. But you've only got to do one if you want to. I've also got some students who've been blogging for a while who are mentors and they do a really great job going and visiting the other students and leaving comments there. Okay. Anyone got any questions or comments? Or? There was something about visitors. Well, I've got students Tom from added something about age visitors. eight. I'm not and sure I think the eldest what it student was. is 32. Maybe I'm not particularly worried about the older students, those that are 20 or older, because they're usually oh. writing their posts about a particular topic that they're interested the, in. I usually cater more for the 10 to 14 year olds. And so I've got to have activities or map. What do you mean, um, post ideas. Are the visitors for them. who come in? So and visit I try to think about the, their the curriculum blog? and what sorts of ideas would be good there. And one year we did oh, world um, an yeah, M and M mass data collection where we went through and everybody had to um, try and collect an M and M box that was a certain number of grams so that we all had the same size box to start with and then they had to count all the different colors and we had a spreadsheet that was on the challenge blog that they could then fill in their information on so we got data from Russia and China and USA and New Zealand Canada and teachers would um, write a post about what they did in their class with it and have a picture of the M&M &M box and of course the M&M &M box in Russia is different to the M&M &M box in Canada and Australia and so on. Yeah, I used to have that so on doing Moodle. something like that yeah, the, uh, the an interesting great. You mathematical can have on a type activity. Or Moodle or you know with the HTML um, on a Moodle page. As I said I'll, I'll do stuff more if yeah, the middle school ones would be the Facebook I think it was Yahoo, and checking their or you privacy also settings and that sort of yourself. thing. But I don't think that's um, that anymore. The students usually like ones that uh, That's okay, Lena. We knew you as meant well. facts. I found that ask questions. I was going over the same activity yeah, all knew the time, that. and there are some teachers who've been taking <laughs> typos part are since that very 2008 in the chat with their classes. I make a lot of them. And so them, the so teachers know that the activities are coming up, but because they're new students, that so really doesn't matter um, that I've already done that activity a year or so ago. So I've got to only be careful when I find I've got some students who have been there for four or five challenges. Then I've got to make sure that there's a nice variety of activities. That's why I try and have, you know, six to ten activities each week because I know students won't get through all of them. So can you actually some students do try. create a blog they try and get in your edu done blog that week. network? But you've only got to do one if you want to. Else? I've it's also got some students who've been blogging for a while it? who Sorry. are mentors and they do a really great job going no. and visiting the other students and leaving comments I'm, I'm wondering what they use. Do you have okay. any idea what EduBlog uses? Anyone got any questions or uh, comments use or what, whatever? You know, I'll put um, from WordPress. That's what I was trying to find out so that because we're interested in creating a collaborative uh, blog like EduBlog, but we don't oh. know. Um, yeah. <coughs> the, the visitors, that's the little cluster map. Is that what you've been, yeah, Tom? But what? Yeah, I know, but what? 
That's what I'm trying to find out. What are they using? I mean, WordPress is open source. Yeah, so so that's called a cluster map. That's a widget platform that you. So I'm wondering if it's something that, that they had that's bought. That's a, a widget that you can get that you just add I'm, to the I'm side of your blog know. when you see your blog. And it's run oh, by it cluster maps. I know it is. And every time someone visits your blog, any other part questions of the statistics or comments that they collect for you, um, a little dot appears on your map. And the more now, people that have visited from one area, the larger the dot gets. And um, you can then click on the map and expand it out to um, see it a lot more clearly than what it is on your actual blog. You also have other widgets that are ones like a revolving globe that does exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, um, you mentioned ages. I, I noticed that uh, from the Beren, I think they had ages four to seven. Is that possible? It didn't say great. I kept looking at it. it said <laughs> ages four to seven. Yes, what I what I've done there instead of saying grade, because each country, you know, grade one in Australia. Yeah, so the two main um, URLs you'll need is so studentchallenge.edgeblogs.org and teacherchallenge.edgeblogs.org. And the teacher challenge is the one if you want to start setting up your own blog. Or if but you they want wouldn't to be blogging, be blogging would they? Would they include kids start that, developing that their own young, personal the age learning of uh, four, five, nursery, kindergarten? Yes. Yes. There are teachers who are blogging with students that young. Amazing. So actually, it's of every age. In other words, yes. it's K-12 up to uh, the end of high school or tertiary school. No, EduBlogs is the it. platform uh, in Australia. It's actually WordPress type blogs. Yes, that's right. Yep. And, well, that's... Yes, Alina, that's the idea. They can all learn from each other. And, you know, like if I do one of the topics might be... Um, What's your favourite national park to go and yeah. visit in your country? Or where in the world would you like to go and visit the most? Mm. And yeah, Edu why. Then Edu Edu Blogs is the blogging platform and it uses oh, lots of WordPress themes as part of it. I want to do this creation. So they can start comparing each other and making connections that way. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, we're going to continue the discussions. I'd like to thank everyone, and I'd like to thank Sue. What time is it in Australia right now? Is it in the I'm, morning? I'm not sure, but I know that oh, okay. most of the stuff on Edgy Blogs is WordPress. Looks like the weather is lovely. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. It is. I'm just noticing the um, birds flying around where I am at the moment, just some and now I will say that in the first couple of years of the challenge, I did have a class from Argentina wow. who were taking part. Well, Some thank you. It looks like a lovely place. Thank you. Thank you so challenge. much for, um, for um, sharing the work that you do. And, I don't and, think um, I've had any others. I encourage from everybody to get their South students America. Um, we did have some working from, on blogs and. If you don't know what to do, join the uh, challenge. I think, Bahama, I think it's um, a great way to, uh, to start. And there, Thomas is. Um, None this is the same. last uh, session for today. Tomorrow is going to be a long day. I hope you can join us too soon. Yes. On Twitter, if anyone wants to connect to me on Twitter, I'm Taz Teach. How did you get that, Taz Teach? What is the what what does it mean? Yes, what I what I've done there, instead of saying grades because each country you know, grade one in Australia might be a different grade in America or a different grade in England. Wow. So what I've said is if your class is students aged four to seven. So that could be kindergarten one, two, depending in which country you Yeah. <laughs> yes, <that's it. 
Really? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> oh my yes. gosh. Yes. Tas there are kids. <laughs> Who are blogging with students? Well, that yeah, Thomas is um, is from the UK, so I guess he knows more about that kind of stuff than uh, Canadians. Yes, when I get schools around. Um, yes, the that's right. Yep. Been... Yes, Elena, that's the idea. All know. They can all learn from each other, well, and you know, like if I do team. one of the topics, might be. All right. Um, so thank you, thank you so much. It's what's late your in some parts favorite of the national world park right to go and um, visit in your country? In Australia, or but um, maybe where are in the world would you like to go? So and see visit you tomorrow. Tonight. Thank you thank for joining us today. Why? Then students um, have a good um, night's sleep and have a great day. We'll Sue. be able to go and visit it's each other. Saying good night. Oh, I also and have want to go and see Grand Canyon, and I want to do this, 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 and this. So they can start comparing each other and making connections. Thank that you. way.